What's going on everybody? Welcome to After Prison Show. And today I want to give you guys an update about someone who we just recently introduced here on After Prison Show. And this is someone we haven't been able to introduce in person because they're locked up right now serving a 1,800 year prison sentence. A guy by the name of Doug who has become my prison pen pal and a guy who also is never coming home. When I first introduced you to Doug, I spoke about how we became prison pen pals. It was because we had just done a video called Five of the Longest Prison Sentences Ever, where we featured this guy in that video. And it was from there where I began to email correspond with this guy. I sent him an email not knowing if he would ever email me back, but lo and behold, he ended up doing so. And since then, we've become pen pals. I can't imagine this guy has much, if any, support at all while he's been locked up. And I can only imagine that receiving a letter from me and also having me willing to be wanting to write to this guy has got to be a good feeling in the bleak situation that this guy is going to spend the rest of his life in. Now, make no mistake of it, Doug definitely did some horrible things. He took like two or three different people's lives from them. And because of that, I agree that this man should spend the rest of his life in prison. What struck me as absolutely outrageous was the fact that they didn't just give him one or two life sentences. They gave him 1,800 years. Like, why would you ever sentence somebody to that type of time? Why not just say two or three life sentences? But no matter what you may think about this guy, Doug, he did the crime and he is definitely doing the time right now. This man has already spent something like 16 years in prison and folks do not forget the fact that he is never coming home. And I don't think it's so much that I sympathize with this guy, even though to be completely honest with you, I mean, he definitely is in a very sad and unfortunate situation. But I think what drew me to this guy, Doug Moore, and what compelled me to want to become this guy's pen pal is because I'm intrigued with just trying to understand and wrap my mind around what it's got to be like for him trying to wrap his mind around the fact that one, he is never coming home, and two, how does he cope with that? And it's definitely been pretty interesting getting to know this guy. And it's also been a humbling thing for me to be able to be there for somebody who absolutely has nobody at all, really. And to also be able to be there in whatever type of a way to give a person who is completely hopeless at least some type of hope or maybe even just something to look forward to. Something as simple as an email correspondence between him and I. Not only is this guy Doug serving this crazy prison sentence, never coming home, he's also in isolation. And let me tell you something about isolation. Throughout the time that I served, the little seven years that I served, and all of the other little small sentences that I served prior to that, I can tell you this from firsthand experience. Any time that you serve in isolation, no matter how much time you're doing, is the absolute worst type of time to do because all you're going to do is think. Because while in isolation, you're going to be left with little more than just you and your thoughts. And though I can relate a little bit to what it's like to serve time in isolation, there's no way in hell I could possibly even imagine what it's got to be like for this guy, knowing that he will never again, ever see the free world. So it's with mentioning all of that that I have thus far that I want to share with you this latest email that I just received from this guy, Doug. Give you guys a little more insight into what it's like for this guy and with the type of time that he's doing in the situation that he's in. Being locked up at a maximum security prison and spending most of his time there locked down. So again, what I'm getting ready to share with you is the latest email that I just received from this guy, Doug. And I want to say this as well before even getting into this. You know, it's probably been about a week since I've heard from this guy. The last time that I spoke with him, he was telling me that his girlfriend or his baby's mama was mad because there was a video on YouTube about him and some interview that he did. It was some type of a video like the longest prison sentences ever. And it was in my response to this guy that I was telling him, hey, look, I do YouTube. I've got a channel called After Prison Show. And really the reason I ran across you was because I myself put a video together just like that. The top five longest prison sentences ever where I featured you in that video. And it's not the same video that you're telling me about that had your baby mama mad. But I honestly didn't know what his reaction was going to be to that. And with the fact that I hadn't heard from this guy in about a week until yesterday, I was honestly under the impression that maybe he just didn't want to correspond anymore. Maybe he was just like, you know what, forget this. But I would learn while reading the three emails that I did receive from this guy yesterday 
that just as slow as they are to get the mail to him and also the emails, it's just as slow for those emails coming out to be received by whoever you're writing those emails to. Hey Joe, what's up? Not much here, just hanging out. We have been on lockdown for a while now. This here is the new thing. Short-staffed all the time. You know, Dave and Rabbit both talked about serving time at Hampton Roads Regional Jail or serving time at any jail here recently where they talk about being locked down so much because of being short-staffed. So it pretty much seems like jail and prison guards are in short supply right now and it doesn't just seem like this is taking place at the jails, this is taking place at the prisons as well. Sussex is the same way. They are so understaffed, it's crazy. No one wants to work in prison no more. It's a shitty workplace on both sides. And I'm guessing by him saying both sides, he's referring to not only for the prison guards, but also for the prisoners as well. And in fact, in a lot of cases, it's the guards that make it way worse for the prisoners than it needs to be. They hold our mail for a week or more before we get it now because they have to photocopy everything and we can only get three pages in an envelope at a time, no real mail, not even our pictures. They are on paper in black and white. It's pathetic. Not like in the old days when you could hold a real pick in your hand and see it in color. You know, that last statement that Doug says right there about not being able to hold a picture in his hands really speaks to me on a level of just how much the smallest things can mean the most to a guy who's serving time and especially who's never coming home. And they have changed the prison system so much, even from the time when I was in there. When I was in there, you were able to get five pieces of paper in an envelope and you could get five pictures per envelope as well. Now you weren't getting five pieces of paper and five pictures in an envelope, but you could get either or. But there's some major changes that have come down the pike in terms of serving time. Mail is a big part of that. In fact, it almost seems like they're trying to phase out any kind of physical mail altogether and get everything converted over to email. And a big reason for that is so that they can stop the contraband coming in. And also so they don't need anybody working down in the mail room. I'm quite certain they've got a program designed to flag any type of keywords that you say in an email that needs to be further reviewed. And if you can convert everything over to email, that's less prison guards you got to have working, at least one less down in the mail department. He says the place he's at violates so much of our rights as inmates. They're under the assumption that as an inmate, we have no rights at all. Well, I've certainly heard quite a few prison guards say that exact thing. You a property of the state. You ain't got no rights in here as an inmate. As a prisoner, you a convict. And you know, whether you agree with that last statement or not, that a prisoner doesn't have any rights, to be honest with you, they might not have many, but they damn sure have a few. Though I can guarantee you, there's gonna be certain prison guards that make you feel like you ain't got none at all. It's messed up bad, especially the food here. It's trash. Even the common fare trays they serve are shit. We've talked about how at certain facilities they're gonna feed you better or they're gonna feed you worse. And in fact, it's gonna be far and few between the facilities that do actually feed you good. To be completely honest with you, most all of the places that I've been to fed you relatively good in relation to what I've heard some of these higher level facilities feed prisoners like. Don't get me wrong. I've most certainly been to some places that don't feed you all that great, but in comparison to these higher level prisons, like where this guy Doug is at, I'm sure where he's at, it is definitely a lot worse when it comes to the food. And another thing that I pay attention to that he said is even the common fare trays there aren't good at all. Common fare is a specialty prison food tray reserved for people with certain religious beliefs, whether Muslim, Jewish, Asa true, and being able to get a common fare tray is gonna be different depending on where you're at. Some places might only take you writing a request form. In fact, there was a time when I was locked up in the jail where that's what I did. I wrote a request form saying that I've converted my religion to Judaism and I wanted to start receiving that common fare slash kosher tray, which I did. It was as easy as writing that request form. However, I've been to prisons where you need to attend church services for like six plus months, all the while signing every single time that you attend before you can even be considered to receive a common fare tray. And why so many prisoners want a common fare tray, even if you aren't of any particular religious belief, is because in most cases, those common fare trays are gonna be the best type of prison food that you can get. It's supposed to be the freshest, it's supposed to be prepared in a completely different location than the regular prison food, and it is completely different than the regular prison food you would otherwise 
be eating. Some places are gonna give you boiled eggs, tuna fish, peanut butter, different types of soy meat and rice that almost looks like Chinese food. But to hear Doug say that even the common fare trays are horrible at this maximum security prison he's at definitely speaks volumes to the type of food that they're feeding at that institution. You could not believe the shit they serve us. I wish people on the outside could go undercover, come into prison, and see this. Well, they might not be able to do that. Wait, I forgot. There is a TV show called 60 Days In. I'm pretty sure they do that exact thing. Except in that show, I think the whole point is to snitch on what's going on inside of the jail. I mean, forget the fact that there's already a high number of prisoners who are going to Takashi 69 from Jump Street. Now they're trying to get regular civilians to do it on TV. But even though in most cases we can't go undercover to see what it's really like for Doug, maybe I'm able to give the world a better idea through After Prison Show and being able to give you guys these updates as to what it's like for this guy at this maximum security prison that from what it seems Doug's saying stays on lockdown and feeds you horribly pretty regularly. I also asked Doug about the particular prison that he's at. I don't know much about it, but all I do know, or from what I've heard, it's a relatively new facility. And he would respond to that by saying, yeah, this is a new prison and it's already falling apart. Two out of the four buildings are built like crap. Literally, the cells are tin cans with bathtub linings in them. Literally. Wiping the floor in your cell with a washcloth sounds like you have a steel ball scrubbing the floor. But in comparison to where he's at right now, there's only one place that's worse than that. And that's this Supermax in Virginia called Red Onion. This place is definitely a lockdown facility reserved for your worst of your worst type of prisoners. Violent prisoners who have committed violence against either other prisoners or staff. Prisoners who have escaped. Prisoners who have crazy, crazy charges. Malvo, one of the DC snipers, that's where he started his time off at, just to give you a little more perspective. But the reason I bring up Red Onion is because I've heard so many horror stories about this place. Most of the prison stays locked down for 23 hours a day. They don't even let you out of your cell to take a shower. And in fact, what they do is they have a shower on wheels that they roll in front of your cell, lock it in, open your gate, that's where you're taking your shower at. From what it sounds like with the way Doug describes his cell, it pretty much seems like his cell is his shower. And to think about being locked down, spending time in isolation, you're gonna be locked up in that cell for 23 hours a day. The only thing that you're gonna have to look forward to is rec time whenever they decide to give you that, or the shower time whenever they decide to give you that. Being able to come out of that cell and walk to where that shower's at. But can you imagine you don't even get that where this guy is because he says his cell is made from a bathtub lining. They don't care about the mental damage this does to people, especially people in my shoes who don't go home. And you can't even see the outside world at all. I stay angry. And he uses a lot of cuss words talking about this. No joke. I do my best to chill out, but it takes everything in me day in and day out not to flip out. I have been down that road. So not only is this dude sell his shower, he ain't even got no windows in his cell to see the outside world. God only knows the type of wreck, if any, he's ever getting. And from what it sounds like, he ain't getting much, if any, at all. I make everything from wine to tattoo stuff to knives and weapons and drugs. Part of being down for a minute, you get good at that type of stuff. People who have bought my knives are like, this is a street joint, even the police. So obviously he's gotten caught with weapons while locked up, and it certainly sounds like he's pretty proud of these things that he makes. I can imagine this is almost like an art to him, and he probably spends a lot of time on each individual piece that he's making. But even deeper than the fact that this is probably like an art to him and something that he's proud of, God only knows how much he actually needs that for survival where he is. I have been under investigation so many times for what he was just talking about that it's not even funny. But I'm like the gingerbread man. Catch me if you can. LOL. Guess we all got our hustles though. Part of life. I am glad your wife and you are trying again on the little one. He asked about me and my wife. I told him, you know, we had been through some pretty crazy stuff as of recently, talking about the miscarriage. And he spoke very positively about us trying again and, and hoping that it worked out for us. So, you know, to think about this, here's a guy who has committed like crazy crimes. Here's a guy who was serving a crazy amount of time, never coming home in a super violent, super horrible place, but yet still has this sense of humanity to him. 
There's certain people I know who are going to watch this who are going to say, forget this dude. He's a monster. He deserves everything he gets. Nothing but the worst. But it's just crazy to think that if you can see beyond that, you can see this dude in a much deeper light. And if what I say right there sounds crazy, you definitely got to see the first video that we did about this guy where he really shared a lot of his backstory and him growing up to get a better understanding of like possibly how this guy turned out the way he did. I will pray to my goddess and gods to help you through all that and bless you with the joy of life. Thank you again for that bread, Joe. I spoke about this also in the first video where I said I sent this guy $50. That was all I sent to him. But he was just so blown away by the fact that somebody actually did something nice for him. I can't even imagine what this truly meant to him. But obviously, from reading these emails from him, he continuously thanks me over and over for doing that. You don't know how much I appreciate it and how much it truly does help me out in here. I mean that. I am glad you don't judge me for cutting. He also talked about the fact that he cuts himself. You know, here's this convict. Here's this guy who's definitely going to be seen for that. Probably covered in tattoos. A hardened dude serving life, serving the rest of his life in a place he's never going to leave, who has this crazy thing that he does in an effort to cope with his situation, which is cutting himself. I'm glad you don't judge me for cutting. Most people do. And it is not something I like to tell people, so thank you for understanding. How is the online stuff going? He's talking about after prison show here. I hope good. It's cool you're out there trying to help people get on their feet who have felonies. My fiance is trying to get her life on track and get our daughter back. She lives in West Virginia and is trying to move to Virginia so she and our daughter can be close to me and they can get a fresh start in life. She is trying to find a job and a place to stay till she gets her life up and running again. So if you know anyone or anything she can research here in VA to help her start this transition, it would be greatly appreciated. She is not stupid or on drugs. She has her nursing degree and is going back to school online to get more certifications. She is a really hard worker. She just needs a fresh start, though, for real. She has made mistakes in the past, and it is so hard, though, being in here and having your hands tied behind your back with no way to help her. You feel like a worthless piece of shit. You know, there's a lot of people who say that it's easier to do time by yourself with nobody at all without having to worry about a girlfriend or a baby mama or anything like that. But then again, there's a lot of people who do their time holding on to that significant other, hearing about the struggles that they're dealing with out there in the free world that can only further add to the stress that you're already dealing with being locked up. So for him to talk about feeling like he's worthless and feeling like his hands are tied behind his back, I can guarantee that that only adds to everything that he already thinks about on a daily basis. I can't even help my family at all. I am like you. All I care about is my wife and my kids. So if you know of any info she could use or leads, it would help more than you could know. If not, no stress at all. When he was asking me about this, I've already responded to this email, but I told him I don't know anything offhand. I don't even know where she's going to go. Virginia's huge. She could go up north. She could be down here. You know, but if there's anything that I can do, I absolutely will try to do that for him and for her. How are things going with your wife? If you don't mind, one day after you get to know me, maybe you could hit me up with a pic of your family so I know the faces to the names and the emails. I know a lot of people might hear that and think, Joe, that's the craziest thing to do. Don't never send this guy no pictures. Well, I've already done it. I sent him a picture of me and my wife because, hey, the guy gets no mail at all. He probably ain't seen nothing. He's looking at a shower wall all day long sitting inside of a cell. It's the least I could do. And to be honest, I'll send the guy more pictures of all sorts of little cool things just to give him something to look at. Some kind of visual stimulation because I can only bet that where he's at, he ain't getting none of that. Sometimes it's nice to be able to have that. But I do know some people are nervous about stuff like that, so it's cool if you're not comfortable with that. And I will start working on a pic for you. As for the pen pal stuff, if you could find me a pen pal, that would be cool. If not, it's all good. I told this guy, you know, maybe I could help him get him some pen pals. Maybe I could help him sell his artwork. And there was also another email that I received from this guy that I'm not going to read here because I don't have it. But it was just a shorter email saying, hey, what's up? I haven't heard from you. And that was when I was learning that the mail was definitely delayed. But in that email and from the last video that we did about this guy, somebody, an awesome supportive after prison show, has already taken it upon themselves to begin writing to Doug also. So to whoever you are out there, Doug asked me to give you a very special shout out. He didn't want to put your name out there. I'm not going to do that. Special shout out to you. I don't even know your name. He didn't tell me either. 
But special shout out to you. That's a really awesome thing that you decided to do. I got two as of right now, so I'm grateful for them and everyone that gives me a chance in life. So they will come when the time is right. You might have better luck than me, though. If you want to give it a shot, I don't mind. Anyways, I will work on this pick for you and get it out to you. I hope you are doing good and your family is blessed today. Tell them I said hello. And I will hit you back later on. Thank you again for that money. Damn, that was a lot, dude. I will let you get back to your cleaning business, LOL. Stuff will get better, dude. Just got to keep pushing, that is all. Don't say F it. Much respect. Doug. You know, in the last email that I had sent to Doug, I was venting about the cleaning business. And the email that I just sent to him today, I said, you know what? I did finally shut it down. It was for the best. But you know, it's just really crazy getting to know this guy, especially with the situation that he's in. I mean, this is the absolute inside perspective to an individual who has done things to land himself with a life sentence. And you know, we're getting to know this guy and to learn what it's like for him serving this time, serving the rest of his life in prison. In the last email that I just sent to this guy, I asked him three questions, but what I really wanna do is I wanna ask you guys, what sort of questions should I ask Doug? If you have any questions that you want me to ask this guy as we continue to get to know him, who knows, maybe we could get a video visit with this guy or, or a phone call. But again, I ask you guys, if you have any questions you want me to ask Doug, and include them in an upcoming video. Maybe we do a Q&A with a guy serving a life sentence in prison. Leave them down below. Hey, look, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did so, please leave a like and a comment. Let me know exactly what you thought about it. As always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted, and make the most of every day. Peace.